Hi everybody, it's me, Tim. Today I wanna to talk about game development contracting. This is to answer a question from Gorilla Suplex, who asks, what is it like consulting for companies? Also, how involved are you with the development process when consulting? Good question. Um, just to give a summary, up until July of 2020, I was an employee at Obsidian. I had moved up to Seattle intending to remain an employee, but when I got up there, they said, oh, we can't do that. Uh, they weren't set up yet to do to have employees out of state. So I switched to contracting. This was not the first time I had contracted. Um, if you watched my career summary video, I mentioned when I was at Cybron, Pegasus was originally called and then it changed its name to Cybron. When I was a teenager and in college, that was all part-time work during summers and breaks. It was pretty much contracting. And then when I started at Interplay in 1991, I was a contractor. So I made Bard's Tale construction set for them under a 14-week contract. And then when that ended, they hired me full-time in January of 92. So pretty much since 92, I've been an employee until 2020. Uh, I'm 2020 was a weird year all around, but so what I want to do, like I often do is I will talk about pros and cons of contracting. So you can decide for yourself whether it's better or worse than a being an employee, being an employee of a company. Um, cause it's really, it's really up to you what kind of person you are and what risks you want to take and how good you are at. Uh, finding clients. So first I'll do the pros of being a contractor. Uh, first, you, and, and I, I mentioned this uh, just to start off, don't accept an exclusive contract. Um, most places won't do this, but if someone does say they want you as a contractor and they want you to be exclusive, I mean, you can't work anywhere else, you, and you need to decide whether you want to do that. Um, I would definitely ask for more money. Uh, usually they have it hourly. Um, you can do different things in your contract, like have a minimum number of hours a month. Sometimes they'll include a maximum per month. Sometimes it's quarterly. But I would say if they want you to be exclusive, have that rate be higher. Um, maybe not even then. It's really up to you. Uh, if you don't think you can manage two or three contracts at once, then by all means be exclusive. But I'd still ask for more money. Um, <clears throat> there's really no reason for them to ask you to be exclusive. So if they do, you should be getting something out of it. Now, the biggest advantage of being a contractor is you can pick and choose what projects you want to work on. You, as you look at different client projects, you can go with one that really interests you. The, when you're at a company, you're usually just assigned to something. Uh, and even if you aren't, it's pretty much a very limited selection of what what projects they have available and what they need someone with your particular talent on at the time. As a contractor, you can pick and choose. You can look at a, con a project and go, that's not very interesting. Or I don't think that will result in a very good game. And maybe I don't want to be associated with that game. So you can pick and choose. And one of the really exciting things about being a contractor is the selection of what you have is so much broader than what may be at a company. You may... You may work for a company that primarily makes games of a certain type, or you may be assigned to a director to work under a director at a company and they only make a certain type of game. So the, the options of what you may even find yourself ever working on is limited. I think I've mentioned before that I didn't even have an option to work on a console game until I was 30 years into my career. It was 2011 was on, when, at, at Obsidian on South Park, The Stick of Truth. That was the first console game I ever worked on. Until then, everything I made was for PC and Mac. So just that broader array of projects is a really good thing. <clears throat> you also are primarily as a client or as a contractor, you're being approached by a client for the thing you're good at. So if you're strong at something, that's pretty much what they want to hire you to do. You won't find yourself being put on something and being asked to do something that isn't really a, in your your um, suite of abilities because why would they approach you for that? While when you're an employee, 
you may find yourself like, hey, they need someone to do AI. And maybe you're not an AI programmer, but you kind of know it. Or maybe they need someone to you user interface code. Or maybe they just need someone to do system mechanics code. And you haven't done that, but you can. So you find yourself as an employee more often being asked to work on things that aren't exactly your specialty. Where when you're a contractor, you're off, you're usually asked to do things that are your specialty. Which, by the way, is a con because if you're a generalist, you may have a little more trouble finding work as a contractor than if you were a specialist because they want to know what are you offering. Um, to give examples of what I'm often called in to do, I'm often called in as a contractor for a client at the pre-production stages, and I'll link my uh, production stage video below, to review design documents, um, very early, like beautiful corner, um, test rooms, um, alpha. Basically, I'm asked to review the game to look at their story and their setting, and give my feedback, what I think is strong and weak about their story and setting, and do the same thing for the mechanics. In fact, that's probably what I do the most as I work with their lead system designer on mechanics they have. And I do the thing I've talked about here where I'm like, well, are your mechanics supporting the setting and the story you're trying to tell in that setting? Um, so, you know, if you have a supernatural setting, but none of your abilities have anything to do with supernatural, you know, maybe you should rethink that. So I talked about things like that. I'm often sometimes, because of my programmer background, asked to look at the game and give a technical evaluation. Uh, do I think the they're making good use of the engine they've selected? Um, what are my recommendations on using third-party library, standard template library, uh, other third-party software you can buy? Have I used particular third-party software? especially sound <clears throat> and animation software. The animation software I've used, but I usually defer to like, you're off to talk to your animators about that. But stuff like sound, I've not only used third-party sound software, I've often been the programmer on them. So I know a lot about FMOD and WYs and all those third-party libraries. So sometimes I'm caught in for tech evaluation. The, the last pro for contracting that I find is it is way less stressful. As a contractor, you're rarely caught in to give the final decision on anything. You're caught in for advice. And you can say, hey, I see you doing this. This may lead to this problem. You should be looking out for this. Hey, I see you're using this engine. Know that this on this particular thing on this engine is hard to do or takes usually more time than you're planning, blah, 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 blah. But you don't make the final decision. They have a lead programmer. They have a lead designer. They have a game director. They'll be making the final decision. You're being called in to give advice. So in that sense, there's a lot less stress. But now let me tell you about the cons. And I think the cons that I have here are probably true for any contracting job, not just game development contracting, but there they are. The first thing you should know is as a contractor, you have to pay your own self-employment tax and your own insurance. That's used, that's not provided to contractors. So you're going to figure that out on your own. Um, this is, of course, I'm talking about if you're in the U.S. I don't know how this works in other countries. Um, also, as a contractor, while you may occasionally be flown in for in-person um, meetings, it's pretty rare. Most stuff is just done remote. Uh, I mean, they do remote employees, so of course they're going to do remote contractors. So for me personally, I find I miss that day-to-day -day involvement that you have when you not just sit down in a meeting with someone, which face-to-face -face is a little easier, I find, than, you know, video calling. But just the, the the idea that you may run into someone in the kitchen and you might say, hey, I really love this feature you're putting in. And they're like, oh, thanks, I really like it, but I'm worried about the code for it. I'm not sure how to tell the programmer how to do this. And I'm like, oh, well, you, you could do this. And that just doesn't happen. You don't run into people casually. And I miss that. Um, I mentioned that there's less stress because you are only called in for advice. Because of that, you have far less control of the direction of the game. You, I've never been pulled in as a contractor where I've been asked to decide a setting, decide a story, um, decide the, the, the system mechanics. I'm asked, often asked my advice, and sometimes my advice steers it, and they've changed it a little. 
but you do not have full control over that like you might as a game director on a project or as a lead in one of the areas. So you have to accept that once you're a contractor, you're kind of giving up that level of control. But keep in mind, with that comes less stress. So <clears throat> I think that's probably most of the pros and cons that I can think of. So the pros are you can pick your own projects. They're often different than the ones you've done before. Um, and you get to do primarily the things that you're really strong at and you're known for. And there's a lot less stress. Those are the biggies. And then the cons are a lot more paperwork on your end for insurance and taxes and stuff. Um, less involvement and less control on the direction they go. But with that comes that less stress. So you have to decide for yourself. Personally, I find it to be different. I'm not sure which one I like better than the other. Um, but it's certainly different. And at this stage where I'm basically ratcheting down into retirement, contracting certainly fits better for me than employment. But it will be different for you. So I hope, uh, Gorilla Suplex, that this answers your question.